All right, it's recording. So I'll say who we are and then, uh, and this is November 1st, 2020. Clocks have fallen back in many parts of the world. And plus it looks like I might've chosen the wrong time, 1400 UTC. Oh, I thought I thought that was the right time, but anyway, that's, that's the time because that's what I said. And um, it's, uh, this is the EVO, Electronic Village Online, uh, professional development session. And we're doing professional development with moderators, uh, the moder people who want to be moderators in EVO 2021. And this is a four week course, and this is the beginning of week three. It's not a course, it's a session. But I, actually, I guess we can call this what we like. We can call it a course or a session. But it's basically kind of a MOOC. It's just people, uh, we do this to help enculturate people to Electronic Village Online so that we have a common understanding, shared understanding of uh, what EVO is about. And so people who, especially people who haven't done it, who haven't participated before, that they will have a better understanding of uh, how to put on an EVO session that's kind of in sync with the other EVO sessions. So uh, I, I don't know, uh, Jane, are you prepared to talk about what we're supposed to do? I was expecting Rose to turn up and do that. Rose is here, Rose. Oh, okay. Um, Rose has prepared a ment Mentimeter for, it, it, for us today. Uh huh. Okay. Are we supposed to? Hi everyone. Ah, okay. I need. I need. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. I need. Yeah. Good morning from Brazil. Probably in other places. Afternoon. <laughs> evening. Uh huh. A better internet connection. Oh, yes. No, I. I need. I need to be able to share. I'm not able to oh, share. Oh, I'm screen. sorry about that. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, allow participants to share screen. Yes. I, by default, I set my screens to unshare. <laughs> That's because in case you get any uh, security risks popping in, you nah, no don't problem. have that just set as a default. Okay, it's all over but, for you now. Yeah, there we go. So you can, I, I'll be able to just move the slides and mm -hmm. you can go ahead. We can go ahead. Okay. Well, I think the first thing is that we're going to do a quick week two wrap up. If anybody would like to tell us what went on in week two, is that the first thing? Yes. So it's team two. Mm -hmm. um, wait, wait, wait. What is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wrapping yeah. up a week two. Mm -hmm. oh, can you reduce the screen size a little bit? Or let me see. Uh, control minus if it's a PC. Control. Anyway, well, while, while we're waiting for Rose to get that together, I think we can all see what that says. Um, uh -huh. Hi, Carolina. She just said hi to everybody in the chat. Hide here. Okay. Is any, does anybody want to tell us anything about week two? Team two was Natasha was supposed to be here with us. They are probably coming in. I think week two, we are discussing which platform we're gonna use for each session. And so far, um, I, as far as I know, a couple of sessions uh, have decided to use Canvas um, for Evo 21. And, um, I, and a couple sessions you are have decided to use Moodle, and there's one session who's decided to use um, what a D D two L. Desire uh, to I, learn. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Desire to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I I forgot the full name. Yeah, desire mm -hmm. desire to learn. Um, does anyone want to share anything like your decisions and? What do you think about the platforms and there was a nice forum for week two about talking about platforms yeah Anybody? and the forum about logos was uh, uh very interesting a uh, couple of uh, sessions shared their logos or their ideas 
the, they're working on in the, in the discussion about logo. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. I'm looking for speaker view. I can't find it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's me, Sanya. That's because yes, uh, yes. a lot of us have oh. cameras on. <laughs> I found it. I found the speaker view. Okay, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay. So if you, it's nice if you talk to us, if you turn on your webcam, and then we can get you in the recording. Okay. Well, thank you, Sanya. Anything else would you like to say? Is uh, Maybe just that we enjoyed the discussion about logos and about the spaces, mm -hmm. different sessions mm -hmm. we're using or planning to use. And uh, we invite others, other uh, moderators who haven't yet started discussing with us their plans to do so in Canvas. Okay. All right. Well, of course, they'll, we'll continue with that in week three, because what we're going to try to get you to do is to uh, set up a explain to people, explain to us, first of all, how you join your session. And um, we've started a forum for that. So when we put out the call for propose, call for participation, you just answered the call for proposals. When we put out the call for participation, it has to have instructions for how uh, your students will join, how your participants, sorry, will join your session. And we're hoping you can put these uh, put these instructions in a forum, and then let us have a look at at your what you have got going. And of course, this could be an ongoing thing through the end of the week, and even in, after uh, EVOPD. Okay, over to you, Rose. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't we have to go to a Minty? Uh, yes, yes. I, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I just changed the screen um, mm -hmm. just just for us to have a little, you know, um, interactive activity. And I hope everyone can see the slide. You have also the information. So you can go to www.menti.com if you haven't used it this uh, tool yet and add the code it's on the screen and uh, let us know in a word or two what's your impression of the evo pd so far yeah so the that information is there minty.com and put in 47 45 six is that six zero yeah. six no six one one six, yeah six one 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 i'm ah, gonna sorry. also to sorry. yeah i'm gonna also try doing the chat yeah so oh, do it in Menti. Oh, does anybody use Menti here? Because Menti is really cool. Com. Yeah, it's called Mentimeter. It's kind of like Kahoot. Uh, has a one name for for you to use it. Uh, okay, so anyway, I'm going to put the code in my Menti. 47, 45, 61, 1. Okay. Mm-hmm. So do try that, and will we see the results on this screen, or is this just a slide? Oh, uh, it's on the screen. It's in real time. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Should be. <laughs> I had a little problem with my computer um, 10 minutes before I start the session, so I hope everything is working. It should mm. be. Yeah. It is working. Yay. Yes, it is. OK. Sorry, who, someone asked a question? Yeah, do we need to sign in to Minty? No, 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 no. You just, uh, no. You just uh, go to menti.com, put the code. It's like poll everywhere, okay. something like that, except that it, it gives mm -hmm. you a variety of uh, uh, outputs. You can. You can get word clouds. You can do multiple choice. You can have in multiple choice. You can have bars, or you can have dots, dot clusters, or you can have donuts, or what's the other thing besides donuts? Uh, donuts and p and pie. Donuts and pie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pie chart. Yes, right. And I think we're going to have maybe some uh, uh, some full text responses illustrated here as well. Anyway, so it seems like most people think this has been informative, energizing, very professional. Thank you very much, all of, all of <laughs> us. Thank you for 
all the, uh, the awesome moderators who are doing this. Okay. People right. are still adding mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Seven people so far have added mm -hmm. some words. How many do we have here? Oh, that's a good thing. We to have do 18. Again. 18. Okay. 18. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably people still finding their way around to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah, some of the, the, these mm -hmm. things do take a little time in. to, yeah, uh -huh. great. And you can also submit more often if you want. Mm -hmm. One thing um, it's interesting about mentme.com is if you want to um, run your own, you need to go to Mentimeter. So like Google Mentimeter instead of menti.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To actually create yours. But as participant, all you need is menti.com and add the code. Yeah. Okay. Shall we move on? Sure. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so today we are presenting week three, right? Some of the objectives and tasks, um, Vince has already started talking about it, but basically by the end of the week, we need to, you know, have uh, started adding content. So that's the questions you need to be able to answer by the end of the week. Also, you, you didn't talk about certificates and badges yet, right? Vance, can you, can you go I, over I this? didn't, but I think they talked about it last week. But, uh, oh, okay. But uh, basically, the, the, thing, the, the important thing about certificates is that we do not give any kind of academic credit. So you can't mislead your participants into thinking that they're going to get some sort of official credit. credit yeah, and, and it's not accredited except by you. So... Uh, we produce a template for a certificate that tells uh, viewers that the that the person, the receiver, recipient has uh, uh, done the course with you or done the session, and uh, that's really all you can certify them. Uh, and, and you have to decide what's your criteria for uh, uh, you know give, granting these certificates. So. Um, uh, EVO Minecraft MOOC used to do badges. We used to have badges. Uh, we used Credly. Credly has now gone pretty much premium. It used to be kind of freemium, but now it's more premium. So there are various uh, ways to issue badges. It's very easy to do in Moodle. If you're using Moodle, uh, there's, there are automatic ways to give badges. Um, I've, I've kind of... Um, gotten less and less interested in badges myself so uh but i don't know if other people have opinions about badges anybody else, anybody getting them? are you keeping a bag a badge pack is anyone doing that let's see in the chat there are some in the mm. chat oh, I don't okay see yeah no no is this still about mine to me nothing new about the badges uh -huh. yeah well that anyway would be nice if, yeah. you know, if you, um, if you need help with badges, I, I used to be quite into it. And, uh, and as I said, we actually did it with uh, uh, EVO Minecraft MOOC. But the way we did that, we had, we had participants fill in a spreadsheet. They had 10 things they had to do. And when they did it, they had to put in the spreadsheet a URL linking to what they had done. And then the whole spreadsheet was shared publicly. So when we said that someone got a badge, that meant there was a link that was to our spreadsheet. And anybody could go into the spreadsheet publicly and see all the people, what they had done to complete uh, that badge. So that's where the credibility mm -hmm. came from. That's how it, it had, you know, it said, it said, I've done this, this, and this, and not only that, but click on this link and you mm -hmm. can see what I did. So uh, mm -hmm. didn't ask any questions. We just, uh, we didn't judge anything. We just as it was, if someone did it, uh, they give us the link and there it is. And then if they did enough of them, we gave them a badge. 
that was uh, all about accomplishment, right? Accomplishing the missions that we yes. had set out for the participants. Shelly Terrell did an EVO session on uh, writing the e the e perfect ebook or something like that, and she always called she sort of inculcated in me that we should call things missions instead of tasks and things like that. They're missions and you, you accomplish your missions. And of course she teaches children predominantly, but we're all children. So it works with everybody. So I tend to, and, and, and missions for EVO MC is our wiki. So, and mm -hmm. um, for, for badges, I, I remember Nellie mentioning that the, for Moodle, they have a built-in badge system yes. um, where she award like badges bi-weekly if they accomplish the yeah. missions assigned to them. Yeah. yeah. If you enroll in one of Nellie's courses, very soon you'll get a badge for doing something. It's, it's a good incentive. It's a nice incentive. But it's... In Moodle, it is automatically done. Uh, I kind of did them manually. That is, at the end of the at the end of the session, I found who had done the right number of uh, assignments or, or missions, and uh, then I uh, produced the badges. There's only a handful of people, so it wasn't so much trouble. But if you're doing something like uh, uh, CLIL, which uh, uh, Techno CLIL has thousands of participants. Uh, you know, that can be a headache. So you need to think ahead if you want to give certificates. And if you do give certificates, you have to follow up because people will write us, the coordinators, and they'll complain that they haven't got their certificate. And, um, you know, so you just need to be very careful about what you promise and don't promise, don't over promise. Don't uh, say you're giving any kind of accreditation because uh, some people, if they think they're going to get a certificate, they can take back to their Ministry of Education. Um, they'll have a piece of paper, but it only says it's from EVO. And, and it can't say it's from TESOL. The TESOL has been very firm with us about that. That's what we call our EVO sessions sessions because EVO, uh, sorry, with TESOL has courses. They have uh, courses for which they provide certificates. And so it's been a, uh, when we started EVO, it was a big bone of contention whether or not we could give certificates. TESOL's stance was no, we can't. But we finally negotiated as long as we don't make any claims about our certificates, as long as they don't compete with TESOL, then uh, it's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? Because it's a very important point. Uh I, not a question, but a comment, and mm -hmm. I've made this comment before, but <clears throat> just for anybody who might be new, um, many places all over the world will go ahead and like local places, like your school, will recognize that, hey, Cheryl went off and did this uh, four, six, seven week workshop thing, and then mm -hmm. I know it's not a workshop, okay, so, um, we think she did a really good job and she brought something back for us to use in the school. And so they'll give people credit. And I don't mean credit in the fact of a university credit, but I mean personal, hey, that's great credit, all right? And in Kansas, one of the few things that we actually did do right years ago when everything was going right in the world, um, they recognize that teachers go out and do a lot of stuff on their own. And they don't have anything to say, you know, we got, did this and that. So they set up a system where we could report our things that we did. So every year when I finish Evo, I turn in my, uh, basically I just turn in my list of tasks that I did. And as uh, there's a little online thing that I type all this up on. And then they want to know sometimes, do you have anything to show? So if I made videos, I'll give a link for videos. If I did whatever I did, you know, like I'll, and then um, I will go ahead and, and put, turn in a GIF, I mean, not a GIF, but a picture of the uh, badges and certificates. And I am very clear in that. And I always say, these are only to say that I actually was there in that room that day so i i call it like an attendance slip you know so that's you're, basically you're talking about as a recipient is. as a recipient this is what as a do. recipient yes as uh -huh. a recipient yeah it is my attendance that that is to verify for them 
that yes, I was in this, I, I, t I attended this. And then as a result of attending this, I made this video or I did this or I did that. I joined in with, so then I count up, I'm usually pretty frugal. I count up how many points I think I get. And then I turn that in. And then those points go in because 20 hours of work equals a point for us. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but so you're, it's talking, easy to, you're talking about your individual case and my individual professional development plan yes i, mean, I understand that and that's that's a really good plan and yes uh, yes and, and but so as far we as don't have to, it's not it's not going to give us any college credit it's not going to mm -hmm. give us any pay credit but what it does do is say that yes you're doing professional development on your own in this particular task that's oriented to your teaching and so we're going to recognize that you did this how, how and then how do you how do you do how do you uh, control that for the session that you moderate? Uh, how do you what do okay. they do? What do your participants do? Oh, you mean for my for yes. the participants? Yes. Well, yeah. Our sessions? What, what okay. should the moderators so here make, take from? Well, mm -hmm. well, we make sure that everybody it's all it's all spelled out what the what each individual activity is that they're going to do. And then, you know, we have like an outline or a list or a syllabus. And so I, I think about when I go and turn mine in, I think about how would I want uh, this to be for some other teacher to turn theirs in. It needs to be clear, concise, and uh, objective in what the task is that they were doing. It's all on their own, though. They are doing this on their own. Yes, that's, that's the point. And so do exactly. you have, do you have, do you take, uh, do you grant certificates to anybody according to their point system or do you, or, or no, uh, no, okay. mm -hmm. no, no, no. That's my whole point. Uh -huh. If you want to use this information in your school or your uh, country or whoever certifies you, if they offer something like that, if they say, yes, we know that on your own, you may read a book about education or you may go to a workshop or you may go visit the uh, Kansas, the Topeka, Kansas, and go around the Capitol building. Whatever is something you dreamed up in your own head that will help you as a teacher. That's what this is. Yeah. And, Only and actually, you have actually a little more proof than you would if you went to Topeka. You'd have to take a few pictures okay. and stuff like that. And and uh, Natasha has said in the chat that in Serbia what you're describing has to be certified by the uh, accredited by the ministry of education. So yes, Kansas, Kansas can, sounds like a good they place to do that. Yeah. Well, it, when I was a young kid, when I was first teaching, somehow the NEA and the, uh, that's our, our KNEA, our Kansas teachers union, basically, we got together with the state legislature and the board of education because people were sick and tired of doing stuff all the time. I know my parents would do stuff all the time and never get any credit. And, and then they had to go take classes. They had to go pay somebody to get credit for stuff that they were already doing. And so they negotiated with the State Board of Education that we could do that. And somehow, I don't know how I fell into it. I was teaching in Derby then, just south of Wichita. And so I ended up in that group. And so it was awesome. We went in and we went all over the state and taught, taught teachers how to do it. And everybody was like, oh, this is horrible. The, the colleges did. It'll break the colleges down. There'll no, be, no longer be any room for colleges. No, no, no. They still go take classes. People still take classes. But if you're doing something like working on a project for a school, do you ever get credit for, you know, when you go and you work on a project in the school, like we're going to decide if, do we need new computers? Okay. Well, you do a lot of evaluation and a lot of investigation and a lot of work that actually you could be doing in a, in a college class. Well, that was the kind of thing that it picked up. So we've had that since the 80s. Yeah, but that's, again, that's your situation. And we're trying to yeah. extrapolate to but, EVO. And we're trying to explain yeah, to no, moderators, no, no. to guide moderators meant, and what they should do. In my first statement, I, I meant I did not say that more strongly. Mm -hmm. Here it is. I have come across other people in our situations that do not have to go through the ministry that do actually have some leeway to do some things on their own and, and turn that into their school district. If nothing more than just go tell their principal, you know, 
but for me, it's a little more formalized, and that's how I get my recertification. Okay. Anyway, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Rose, do you want to move on in our program? Just keeping an eye on the time. Yeah. Rose is muted. Do you know that, Rose? Yep. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, just another interactive activity uh, for us to know um, which online space mainly you're going to use, like your main platform. So, again, um, mainty.com, use the same code and uh, let us know. Okay, so we can choose more than one um i'm not sure actually <laughs> because because the idea was because the idea was to know like what's your main platform of uh -huh. course we always use other tools right okay. uh -huh. that integrates with our platform but yeah. like it had been said before uh -huh. canvas for example have been quite a winner like some sessions been thinking about using it mm -hmm for the participants. Um, but we would like to know if you have been thinking of using another one. Mm -hmm. So Okay. I submitted, what happens if, uh, what happens, how do wow. we, do we see a result here? Yeah, it's supposed to, let me just take a look. Um, it's a multiple choice one, mm -hmm. so. What, the, wait, I'm only I'm only able to select one if I click mm -hmm. on something mm -hmm. else. It'll, yeah, it's, it's a multiple choice. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. That's why I see our main platform is the one you're going to use really the most. Uh huh. Yep. Let me oh. see. Yeah, that little that little uh, in the corner does it have a number over it? The little people. Um, eight, of people, eight people who, so far. Oh, okay. Yes. Did okay. So for some reason yeah. we can't really see. We can't get the visualization. Nine people so far. Okay. Let me just let me just find out um, how it's going to work. Uh huh. Uh, okay. I have a uh, tool where it says. Uh, close voting, ah. and I guess when we close the voting, oh, then okay. that's when um, the mm. results gonna show. But it's still eleven people, you so do, I don't know. Yeah, you do have a dynamic option where you, maybe maybe you had to mm -hmm. click it in where you could show the results as they're coming in, which is interesting mm. to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in this case, I think you no, know, it's after everybody has voted mm -hmm. or okay. a certain time. Because there is also a timer that you can mm -hmm. use, mm -hmm. like a countdown timer, 12 mm -hmm. people. Okay. So far, um, let's see if anyone else is going to vote. Doesn't take another. Yes, main platform. That's right. Nagala yeah. says, showing because results it, as yeah. people are voting makes it. Fine, true, it does. That's okay. Yes. It's a, there's so well, many I, complications. I'm kind that. of a, I'm a kind of afraid of clicking on it. <laughs> oh, let me see. Hide, oh, that might be the problem. Let me see. Ah. Hide the results. No. Yes. There we go. Yes, okay. Oh, good. So it's we have. coming. That's better. Oh, yes. I had to click on something. Yeah, there. okay. But the so. voting is still going on. It's not closed yet. Okay. Or not supposed to be because I didn't click on it. Well, <laughs> so. anyway, at least we have something to talk about. So it looks like Moodle mm -hmm. and Canvas are the two that people here are predominantly choosing. I put PB Works because I was actually, I was, uh, I wanted to put Facebook as well, but uh, that's what we're using for EVO Minecraft MOOC. Uh, PB Works is kind of to put the syllabus up and, uh, but it's not interactive. Uh, mm -hmm. and Google Groups. Somebody's using Google Groups. Okay. Does anybody I want to tell in, us? Uh, mm -hmm. I think in um, in our session with Evil Minecraft mm -hmm. um, last year, mainly um, it was used like the the main platform was Facebook, wasn't it? 
Yeah, we have a Facebook group. Uh, I, I suppose actually also Discord because in in for mm. gamers, uh, Discord is kind of like Slack, uh, except it, it has very good audio capabilities and it's uh, very much in vogue with gamers. And also, but it has lots mm. of different. Um, it's it's quite developed over when we first started using it. You can put a lot of content there and. Um, yeah, it has some interesting, interesting uh, interactive features, and you can form groups and things like that. So you can uh, you can keep a running chat going. It's kind of like a forum. Natasha says she'd like to know more about Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this Discord actually with the remote teaching and a lot of people, um, not a lot of people, but here in Brazil, I have seen like um, some universities start using it as their um, you know main platform to connect with students. I quite like it because you can create channels uh, you can create like private channels as well so you can group up people in channels text channels uh, voice channels um, and you can have set up in main rooms it's it's really great. I really like discord as well yeah. It's, it's very handy for Minecraft because mm. we can go into the game and we can talk to each other. And uh, I mean, you could use, uh, when we give presentations, we usually use Zoom, but it's, uh, there's so much else with Discord because you can be interacting not only in voice, but also you can be interacting with URLs and things like that in there. In your and visuals, chat. visuals as well now. You can mm -hmm. stream, mm -hmm. you can stream your mm -hmm. uh, screen now. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have been using that. with my students. Mm -hmm. Okay. And does anybody else want to tell us why they've chosen Google Groups or uh, Canvas or Moodle? Okay, I'm yeah. going to... Go ahead, Rose. No, I was going to close, but somebody voted, so. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so of course I'm using Moodle because I I know I've used the others too. I've used several other ones. It just seems like like you were at telling us that you could put things in advance. And it if you have a whole lot of people, it really minimizes the amount of actual uh, going into each person's thing, some some activities that we do, we want them to do, but we're not going to be right on them because this is not a class. This is supposed to be fun. So as soon as they do this and learn something cool, they say, here's what I learned, and then they get automatic credit. You know, we're mm -hmm. not going to judge them on how they wrote that out or if it's not perfect. I mean, some people do try to do that. We, we try to frown on that in our group. But anyway, um, that's why that's one of the reasons I pick Moodle. Plus, I like to be able to get in there and adjust it myself and, and move around, move stuff around, and mm -hmm. make my week look the way I want it. I suppose you could do. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jane. Um, all right. Jane. Can I ask a question about, about uh, your session? Um, did, were, was part of the um, requirement for. for uh, the participants to come up with a lesson plan to teach young, learn young learners? Oh, uh, hmm. I think we may have changed that one around a little bit. I'll, I have to go look at it. And I, I will tell you all, I don't know if you know this, but my mm -hmm. mother had a stroke about three weeks, four weeks ago, about a month and a half ago. And all my mm -hmm. sisters, one lives in Canada, one lives in Montana, and my other sister, mm -hmm. I'm the one who's driving my mother around. And also, mm -hmm. I had just got back from Mayo Clinic, and you know my daughter is still not completely well. So mm -hmm. the last few weeks have been a little chaotic, and so I'm trying to make it to our meetings and participate as much as I can there. But uh, let me get in on that, Jane, before we leave, and I'll, I'll get back with you. But you, here's what the thing is. If we yes. have them make a lesson, I don't remember it being necessarily, if we use the words lesson plan, mm -hmm. that, ah, so what do you see? Are you probably well, looking at Well, the, the reason I asked is, um, is that um, 
uh, for my session, the new session, the cl uh, science CLIL, or yeah. I, yeah, the new session that we proposed and we're thinking yes. about whether or not to include um, like a, a mission on or, or ta task or mission on uh, creating yeah. a lesson plan. And uh -huh. if we need to go through like each lesson plan and give feedback and perhaps um, your, your okay, experience I with, okay, with, I with 400 participants, I, I don't know if it's a good, I, probably you know, not, if so you have any suggestions, so. Yeah, so here's what we did do. I, I do, yeah, okay. I, and maybe I'll go through and make sure that I didn't incorrectly write something down or anything. But um, so what we do is we tell them what we do, right? And how we would make a lesson. And then we ask them to go out and like mine is the low resources, right? And so I have them take, I've got new ideas this year. So they're all going to kind of change a little bit. But I ask them to take something. I don't care. And when I make a video, I'll show them. I'll say, I'll show them a piece of paper or, or a leaf or whatever. And I said, do something with this. You know, I don't care what, just do something with this. Now, it was very difficult for some people, but other people were right with it. But uh, basically, all I want, all we want them to do is take what we're doing and do something with it with their students. A lot of them still have students or they have family or, or kids at home, right? So do something and make a little video. And then once I've made that video, then they turn the video in. So it's not like we're going to check every one of their, we're not going to check their instructional goal or this or that. We just want them to, when we make a list of basics of what we want to see in the video. Mm -hmm. four or five things that you would want them to see mm -hmm. you know? and uh, so anyway that's what we do we kind of got away from that the last year or two we're we've all been in agreement that we're going to be back on target again but you cannot ask people uh, taking their own time to do some kind of college level rigorous thing because okay. then you're obligated to take it that serious you know what i'm saying i'm not saying we don't take it seriously yeah. But if they've met the criteria, and some people have, have, uh, have uh, okay, we use responses too. We have other, if they get two responses from other people, okay, mm -hmm. we have to kind of guide that a little bit better this year. Last year, for the first time ever, people would go, oh, this is a really cool video. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have to guide that process just a little bit because that doesn't quite more, mean more concrete feedback. Yes, yes, yes. And in the past, people have done that. They've gone, we like this. This would be great to use in my class for bubble for reasons, right? So we have specifically not said enough about that yet last year for some reason. But uh, back at your your thing, I think it would be good to call those yours your CLIL things missions. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but I used to work for Pitsco and probably half of you don't even know who Pitsco is, but they used to, they're, they're a, a science, uh, they do sell all over the world, but they're one of the first people that put kids into groups and they had teams and they had missions and each mission had a, had a mission sheet and they had a, a person who was in charge and, you know, you know, the whole team uh, set up for in the, from the eighties and nineties of putting kids in. okay so anyway missions are perfect because that's where missions came from when people started calling those missions they were from nasa from the, everybody who was connected with nasa including pitsco and all the others right so your science clue it would be perfect to call those missions i think so anywho thanks great idea little. also carolina um also commented um in the chat carolina can you can you share more yeah. about what you've done sure Jane. hello jane hello everyone um, yeah we have done this this exercise with the flip learning participants for many years and um what we have done is pair them up because um the lesson plan comes after like the fourth week so normally we don't have as many people you know like active in the session by then so we can make up a list of the people who are active. We pair them up and they just uh, send each other the lesson plan and give some comments um, based on a, on a rubric or checklist, I think, is that what, what we give them. 
it's a checklist. Mm. So we don't have those comments, you know, like good job, but like there is something clear about what is the criteria they should be meeting for the lesson plan to be considered okay. And it is not college level work as uh, Cheryl was mentioning. I think it's important that they, they just feel like, okay, I take my lesson plan, I adapt it, I adjust it to make it a flipped lesson plan. And they have some criteria in a checklist, like it has a video, there are activities for the individual learning space, you're considering Bloom's taxonomy in the planning, you know, things that we have covered throughout the session. So um, it's simple, it's CC, and yet it's, um, it's a good way to close, you know, this idea of, okay, now I know how to flip my lesson, right? So I would say that's, that's all I have to share for now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank yeah, that's you great so much. Yeah. yeah. Jane, I, I, something jumped in my head that I'm going to jump off. Okay. Um, it's a taste. That's what we're giving these people. A taste of what they might get in if they wanted to go full bore out into making this their, their way of acting and working in schools. So we're giving them a taste of developing their concepts. So anyway, thank you all. Well, thank you. This is very helpful because um, our this week's mission is to uh, fill up our our online session spaces with the content, and this is one of the things I that came across um, what what I should do for the lesson plans. And um, great, thank thanks for your uh, great suggestions that we could pair um, participants up um, for to do the to, to uh, work together. Um, so, and provide, pro providing them with the checklist so that um, they know very clearly what, what is expected uh, in the lesson plan. And perhaps they could, uh, we could ask them to gear, give each other peer review and get feedback. Thank you very much. Do you have any other questions about um, th this week's mission? And I think the mission is to put start uh, populating your, you've, you've chosen your course, your, your, your uh, platform, and you need to populate it now with uh, from your syllabus. Hopefully, if your proposal was well thought out, you've uh, got a week by week syllabus set out. Uh, now you have to think of some activities for it or uh, things for people to do as we do in Canvas, we try to find things for you to do um, without just top down talking to you. In fact, we want to invite you <clears throat> to uh, ask anything you ask it here on the and the mentee there if you want, or you could just grab a mic and ask us anything, or uh, we want to, I don't know how much, what else we have to tell people, but basically the idea is that we want to interact with you and answer your questions and uh, help you uh, if you need help, either here in live session or in Canvas um, or through your mentors, we have a mentor system so anyway, you're welcome to uh, talk uh, to us if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, can yeah. I say something? Sure, there was Sanya. a question in the chat. I spotted the question in the chat. Uh, one of the moderators asked about when a group works on their syllabus or their logo or their um, any other tasks, where do they put uh, the new ideas? Maybe we have to emphasize, we have to um, repeat that uh, part of the plan. When working on improving your, uh, your your proposal, when do the group uh, put their new ideas? In your on your platform. Is I know, I know, but uh, th that was the question in the chat. Ah, okay. Yes, the it's, it's, question. it's time. Now, when, it's, when, yeah. it's time to start developing your session because you know this is. Uh, you have to do it, and you have until December, I suppose. Well, like, no, we're supposed to decide by the end of November if your session is viable. And uh, some people don't have time to develop their sessions. They have good ideas. They really, or things happen in their lives, and they uh, most of the sessions that are proposed are accepted. But 
every session has been accepted tentatively, which means we think that your idea was good enough that you could develop it. Or maybe it was even better than it, it, some of them are very good. But at least if we've uh, if we've looked at your proposal and we we think that we've invited you here, it means that we uh, we think your proposal has promise, and we th we think that we can see how you could develop this as a session. But it's a tentative acceptance, and so that means that you have to actually put it online. Uh, that's what those, these EVOPD sessions are about is to help you put it online. And uh, that's why this week in the forum, uh, we have a, a, a forum for it. Uh, if you look in the uh, tasks for this week, you'll see that in the forum, uh, one of the questions is tell us in the forum how we can join your session or how we can get onto your platform um, and um, put something there. So as if we look at your session we understand it's not ready yet you know but at least we can if, you, if we look at your platform we can we can see it gives you a little deadline for the end of the week and your real deadline is in november but uh or in january what was it in december when, when do we make our decision end of november i think isn't it anyway um basically it has to be ready to go uh, we have to see before we can announce that we're going to promote it in EVO. We have to see that it is a, a, vi a viable session, that it's well-rounded, that you've had time to develop it. And so that's what we're looking for. So we want to start looking. We want you to start putting your stuff. If you want to know where to put your logo, put it on your platform. And, uh, and you can also update your proposal. You can put it there. So if you need feedback on it, you can ask us personally, you can ask your mentor, you can put uh, right into the forum. There's a support forum at the end of each week, so you can write there. So there's many ways you can get help. Some, sometimes even the, like for example, canva.com, it allows you to share um, anything that you create so maybe where you're creating your logo, you know, the platform where you're creating it, the tool you're using, gives the possibility of sharing a link so people can see it. If you're not sure, like, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to use this one, but I like feedback on it, uh, just post in the, in the forum where we can actually take a look and everybody can give a feedback on it and help you out with your questions about it. I think that's a good way to, that's what I would do first. Um, if I'm not sure yet, that's the logo I want, or, you know, I invite people to give me some sort of feedback. And there was a forum in week two, I think, or if, if not in week one, I, I can't remember. Anyway, there was a forum. In week for, two, week, in week two, two that, yeah. was, that was a place, yeah, yeah. to, to so post. So people have already shown us multiple versions mm -hmm. of different logos and asked for which mm -hmm. one you like. And to tell you, frankly, I looked at them and I thought, well, you know, they all look good. Um, it's really so your choice. It, they, they all look, everything now, I saw there looked fine, you know. So now it's really the time to get the, the platform yeah. ready yeah. and uh, let us look into it for next week, right? Yeah, right. the sooner the better. Week four, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Lane, Lane has a, pro, uh, Lane mentioned that she posted two questions in Mentimeter, but she, she does. She uh, didn't see them on your share screen. Ah, uh, here we go. Or, oh, or Lane, see. would you like to grab the mic? Yes, I'm changing them now. <laughs> uh. no, go ahead. I'm gonna show. Uh huh. I can't see because part of the question is covered. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show the questions. You, uh -huh. you guys take a look. As soon as you finish answering, I'm going to click and say it has been answered. And that's a good idea to use a Mentimeter so we can actually learn also how to use it better. I had never used it that way, so. I can't see the question. Well, the last one you had up, you had this something cover that one right there is covering the screen we can't really read mm -hmm. the question and we can't yeah that's what i'm trying to do because like i think they are like um in a sequence so mm -hmm. the first one is going to be this one 
Okay. Let me see if I can change it another way. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, well, you could choose, but then obviously. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, then, I got it. Okay. I got it. Uh huh. So this three and this is four. Okay. Okay. Shall mentors get certificates after sessions? Never thought about it. <laughs> I mean, we work for karma, you know, so. Um, <laughs> Mentors, mentor, are you, uh, I don't know, mentor certificate, maybe the grateful moderators would provide a certificate for their mentor if it warranted it. I don't, there's, we've never done that before. What was the one before that? Does anybody else have any comment on that? How do we know who our mentor is? Good question. Uh, I'm mentoring the uh, you the shaping Uzbek team. So, and, and I'm pretty sure they know who their mentors are. I don't know how. Does anybody? Maybe not everybody has a mentor. Uh, it, it only if you've you're, you're doing this for the first time, you should have had a mentor. Is there anybody here who? Uh, we actually have a spreadsheet um, do. Do and assign, a... We've assigned mentors for each se new session. Is it something we can put in the... Well, the mentors were supposed to contact their mentee group. So I guess by now, everyone must have con well, been contacted. Well, the ones well, that needed the, mentors. All right. Ours is a new set. This is Lane. Uh -huh. Ours is a new session, uh -huh. but we are not new to moderation yes. with one exception. We are uh, not new to moderation, but it's a brand new session. And I think yeah. we could benefit from having a mentor. Oh, okay. I would like to have a mentor. Anytime. I haven't done EVO. I haven't done EVO in five years and I'm using uh, Canvas for the first time and uh, trying to coordinate five moderators. And I would uh, love a mentor. Okay. Okay, uh, that's great. Okay, we will. Martha says that um, Carolina is in, in your session. Perhaps. Oh no, well, yeah, well, <laughs> I've done a lot of EVO moderation over the years, but I, I, I value having a mentor, who, someone who's not a moderator <laughs> with us. Mm. Sure. It just uh, really helps mm -hmm. to have that person. Yeah. You know, means I, I, um, I think it's a good idea because you can have someone that is outside the process, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. I see. We're too uh -huh. close to it. We're too close okay. to it. Okay. Mm. That's why Vant is my new session's mentor. It's a new session. <laughs> I'm in. Yes. Ah. Yes, I'm I'm actually mentoring two sessions. I was volunteer to do Lane as well, but you know, Lane, you can always write me anytime you, you have a question. I'm quite, a mentor can be somebody you can just Copying when requested or someone who follows or, up yeah, with the but process. If you're, looking, yeah. if you're looking for someone to follow what you're doing, I'm not sure if mentorship works like that anyway. I don't really follow people's sessions, but I'm there to help if they ask. Usually well, mentor, people more, ask me questions. Uh, yeah, I mean more like ahead of time to kind of look over everything, give us suggestions. Since we're doing this from scratch, we're building mm -hmm. a brand new EVO session from mm -hmm. scratch. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like having someone outside take a look. Someone then you'll yeah. have to complete week three task, which is to show us in a, how we can join your session and put some stuff there, right. and we can come and look at yeah. it. Yeah, that's what that's Great. for. Thank you. And and okay. happy to respond to you personally as well. Okay, Christine would love to help. Are okay. there? Prepared boiler plate instructions for the various platform choices. It would seem redundant for each system to read them from scratch. Oh, hmm, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I don't, first of all, there's so many platform choices. Um, it's hard for us to anticipate. Right now, we're finding out what people have chosen. And just the people here have chosen only four uh, things, not counting me who chose PB Works. We had one Google group or Google, Google Classroom, I can't remember, Google Classroom, and Moodle and um, Canvas. And uh, the session, we're, the PD session we're putting on right now is was started from scratch. And uh, some of us knew more about it than others. Christine seems to know a lot. Jane seems to know a lot about Canvas. Uh, but 
Rose and I don't. We're just kind of confused just putting together this event tonight. <laughs> but anyway, we learn as we go. But, you know, I don't know if there's any uh, boilerplate for, you know, but you can ask people uh, as uh, uh, Elaine just mentioned, she does, she's doing it on campus, but she doesn't really know about campus. So that's we're kind of helping each other. Uh, when she hits a snag, she can call on someone. Shall moderators, ah, I see. I think the question about mentors was actually about moderators. Okay, shall moderators get certificates after completed sessions? After the complete moderators. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, we have a plan for that. I, I remember I remember getting one from hmm. Minecraft. From Minecraft? For moderating, moderating Minecraft, ah, right? That, that would have been. I'm not sure. You I'm mean, not sure. Uh, you probably got a participant, or maybe you oh, completed yeah, the badge. Yeah, you probably, yeah, you happen to be a moderator. Not. Yeah. But that's a good suggestion, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Who shall we put in charge of it? Maybe someone who's not here? <laughs> Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> Nelly. Does Canvas really, have certificate. a way? Does Canvas have a way for issuing certificates? He knows all about this stuff. Mm. Yeah, anyway, okay. <laughs> it's, these are all good ideas. So, and we'll have a text chat. Uh, it's being recorded. Also the text chat. So if you put, actually, if you put these suggestions in the text chat, then we'll have a record and we can uh, distribute that in some way. Okay. There is only one more question. I, I don't know if we had actually um, answered that in the beginning of, um, yeah. You know, uh, when we're talking about peer assessment, all the techniques. Yeah, what te what other techniques can save mm -hmm. moderators time when, uh, you know, so they don't have to think they have to look over everything. Like, like in Jane's case, for example, she's going to have people prepare syllabuses. Who, how can she, what if she has 100 people? Uh, that's a lot of work, you know, for free. So you need to... Um, uh, think of ways to, you need to anticipate that uh, you're going to have uh, hybrid teaching going on in your own life, maybe, and uh, you're going to be pretty busy, and, uh, you know, so you need to find ways, you think, uh, we need to think about this, how, how can you, how can we feed back to each other? In Minecraft, it's easy, you get killed if you don't pay attention. <laughs> no, anyway, we, we just help each other, but it's a different kind of, um, you know, it has its own rewards, its own intrinsic rewards. So Christine mentioned about self-assessment with a rubric. Self-assessment with a rubric, yes, okay. A self-assessment rubric. That would be a good one. Yeah. Any other ideas from anybody? Christine, would you like to explain in sure I can do that. Um what I was thinking is, uh, you know, have a rubric that the team develops um, and then, and, and maybe we could even uh, think of a rubric for ourselves uh, for each session. Uh, it would be based on the items that we've already posted, such as uh, when you construct the syllabus, you know, is this done, is that done? So kind of a checklist. Um, and then you could turn it into a rubric by having some numbers so that you can see which part is done better, which one uh, still needs some work. Uh, so it's basically uh, the items that are already listed on the syllabus and to see to what extent they have been accomplished. I mean, that, that is basically what I have my own students do, my graduate students. Um, and uh, also when I construct a rubric myself, I just look at the task and look at all the criteria that I have listed in the task and to what extent have they been accomplished. Yeah. Thank it, you. Yeah. See, that, that was a great idea, Christine. And somebody mentioned, uh, oh, Nagla mentioned that there's a, an online checklist tool called Checkly. Nagla, would you like to tell us more about Checkly? Put the link in the text in the text chat. 
while she's doing that. Halima is making EVO famous in Uzbekistan. She's really doing a good job. It's becoming more and more famous. And Halima, you can answer your own question. You're doing a good job uh, with that. OK. Uh, what was it called? Um, Checkly. 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 I was thinking Rubikly. No. <laughs> OK. Checkly. Okay, she's getting the link. So what does it do? Well, shall we go to it? Shall we? It's like, I, I'm guessing it's an online checklist tool where we could. Create. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah. So uh, I haven't used it often, but uh, I was uh, participating in a PD event where we were collaborating together on the, a list of items. And then you can share the link and the group members can sort of check off item by item. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, um, I'm trying to find the, the link, but it's uh, checkly.com. So it's pretty, let me, oh, not not that one. Okay, let me just uh, checkly.com. Let's try this one. Yeah, that's the one. No, it's not taking me. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I don't is it with an I? To... Yeah, it it's with, with an I. I yeah. With a Y. No, it's with an I. Oh, it, it is a free tool, so it's only for a good uh, a period of time. Good for a period of time. Um, Cheryl has also show shared with us Ruby Star. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you put these links in the text chat, then we'll we can ex explore them. Yes, better. Mm -hmm. yes, I will. And also, forteachers.org um, mm -hmm. is a Ruby Star is part of that, and it's uh, sponsored through <laughs> one of the universities, so it's. A, they're going to ask you your name and who you are and all that, but there's, I mean, no per, truly personal and everything's really easy to use. Uh, I think it's KU that sponsors this. So it was actually through the federal government here in the United States, and then they turned it over to the universities. George Bush, the first actually did a lot of cool things for technology. We forget to give him the credit. Not that I would have voted for him but anywho i thought he did a lot of good things for technology <laughs> anyway um if you look at that let's see i pulled it up and you're going to do a few things you can go through a quick tour if you want they have quiz star track stars although a lot of those things we use on moodle now right so they might not be necessarily good but now if you use moodle i think there's a there's a uh I'm pretty sure there's a, a rubric creator there too. So don't forget if you're using those things, see what tools are already available for us. I think Canvas uh, has a, like a built-in rubric, like uh, for the discussion sessions. Yeah, Canvas has a rubric generator. Christine, Christine uh, just wrote in the chat. Um, it, it does. So um, I can look at that and make that available um, and show, uh, show it to everybody. It is uh, something you have to create yourself, but it's, it's very easy um, and very straightforward. But you have to have the criteria uh, along the tasks that you were supposed to accomplish. And then uh, it puts in some numbers and you can see very easily what the outcome is, you know, and where there are some uh, issues still remaining. So I'll make that available. Thank you. Um, I know we're going a little bit over time, but um, Daniela is here um, and she's uh, one of the moderators for TechnoClil who has handled uh, in one year more than 4,000 participants and 
I would really like if Daniela can share, share some tips. Um, if, if Daniela, if she's still available. Oh, Daniela, we, we can't hear you. I, I see your mic uh, going live, but we can't hear you. Mm. Well, the reason why I asked is because this week we need to design, uh, add in our content and um, I'd like to know like what to avoid, um, what, what, what kind of tasks we should avoid giving if uh, just in case we're having a large uh, group of participants. But I guess um, there's Daniela. Okay, can you hear me? Can oh, hear yes, me? I can hear you now. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay, so sorry, I'm with my mobile phone. So it was quite difficult to just to say. Uh, I heard that you were uh, asking me uh, something about my techno clue, and, and then I missed a point because I tried to, to start it and I missed some um, useful parts. Uh, would you mind repeating uh, your, yeah. My your question, question is please? because this week we are populating our sessions in terms of the content or the task missions that we're gonna give our participants. And um, you're, you, you have, um, in the past, you have handled more than 4,000 partip participants. And I would just like to know if, if you have any tips or um, on what to avoid, what to expect, and like um, in terms of what kind of task you would give the participants. Well, I think that uh, managing a session with so many participants, so we had more than 5,000 in 2016, which were a really very a huge amount of people. It is quite demanding in terms of uh, um, managing all these participants, especially if you decide to, uh, to start a, a forum discussion with them or to interact with them. So uh, for this, I think that it is really important that you just start, you just check every, every, I mean, as I say, every now and then, but all day long, uh, what people are asking you because they, they, they uh, post lots of uh, questions and lots of doubts, lots of problems. So you have to be uh, on site all the, the day long. It depends on the number of participants. So if you decide to just to, um, upload contents and uh, to, to require task, it is okay. But if you decide to share uh, things and to follow your participants with something like a, a forum or any uh, interactive um, activity like this, you have to be uh, on, on the task on the, the, on the site uh, every time. So uh, for that question, it was really demanding, and uh, we were the the three of us, Leticia and I, and then we asked some co-moderators, um, a uh, a colleague of us who had been at it um, since the beginning, and then we 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 try to 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 manage this difficult situation because when you also have. Uh, uh, an added um, channel. Uh, we also had the Facebook group, uh, and people can find you everywhere, like uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever. Uh, decide if you want to to manage also these uh, uh, side channels or not, uh, because they need you. So what I can suggest is to be. Uh, to, to make people feel your presence of being there and to, to be devoted, to, to dedicate all your time to this. Otherwise, they can be unsatisfied uh, if they, they need help and uh, they, they, they do not to have any answers to what they are asking. So when you put content uh, and when, when you put tasks, uh, 
uh, be sure uh, of the time you can dedicate to this because um, things are very demanding. So uh, if there is uh, a need of uh, synchronous participation, it is very important that you are there. If there is no need of synchronous participation because your activities are only asynchronous, that's, uh, that is okay too. Uh, if you put on content like uh, whatever you can do, uh, the DS file, PowerPoint presentations, video, any assets you can want to add to your course, uh, and then you ask for a task, be sure that you can reply immediately uh, to, the, to the participants of fulfillments because they wait for your answer, they wait for your feedback. And if you decide to give them a badge, feel sure that you um, create the, the, uh, the necessary procedures to release that badge. In Moodle, that is the platform that we have always used up to now, together with Elvizia Finganotto, that is my co-moderator. Uh, it is possible, and also Nelly, I think, has always used Moodle. It is always possible to, to set this badge at the beginning, before the session, the week session uh, starts. So immediately after we have accomplished the task, you can receive this badge. But what I want to say in uh, in brief is that participants are very uh, demanding in terms of time, in terms of participation, in terms of feedback, and it's, it's a pleasure to satisfy their needs, to satisfy their as students, uh, if we consider our uh, teaching context, uh, if we are teachers or uh, members in a training context, so if you are trainers, uh, they need uh, to be considered. They are uh, our course should be uh, participant centered, so student centered. So it is important that we consider them and we very. Um, attentively uh, consider how to set the tasks to give them the possibility to be uh, followed by us as teachers or trainers. Thank you so much. That, that's a lot of tips, but they're very useful. Thank uh, you. I'm thanks. sure we can, um, we have I, recorded I, this. We can go I, I like the one, uh, devote all your time channel. to it. Yeah, devote that's time. true. Thanks. That's it. Yeah. All, all the available time, really, of course, it, it just pulls you into it. When, and, and for however long you're doing the session, this it is intensive, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hey, I Thank was wondering you. if you are a platform uh, where you can like con condense everything into like a day sometimes it'll seem like it's uh, water coming out of a fire hose instead of a garden hose so you know it can you can group things together responses from people so you you kind of have an idea maybe they solve their problem within 30 minutes and then you don't have to go back to it but that's kind of helped us too uh, some people are leaving i suppose because we are going a bit over time is, I don't know if Rose is still here. Does Rose, did Rose have me? Yes, I'm still here. Oh, okay. I'm just yeah, uh, cool. waiting for you guys to decide to wrap up. Um, <laughs> and there are a couple of the, um, questions here. So how long will the session last? I'm, I'm not sure if it is it's about a this session, live session, or I've, this session itself. <laughs> five weeks is the session itself. Uh, from January to February, mid-January, early January to mid-February. And this one, it's about to end right now. Yeah. <laughs> How to get your questions answered? Uh, ask. Um, yeah, I'm not um, so sure if the person is referring to again uh, today, right now, or maybe the Evo PD. I don't know. Well, it's of course you can't. You can ask a question now, and we will try to answer it. Uh, but mm -hmm. if uh, if you can't if you can't get your question asked now then you can ask questions in the forum. You can mm -hmm. write to your mentor. Uh, you can write, the, the, all the coordinators have email addresses. You can, you're welcome to write to uh, your favorite coordinator and ask uh, 
you know, ask your question. I'm, I'm sure just like Daniela says, you put all your time into it. So if we get questions, we'll take the time to answer them. Okay. I guess we don't have any more questions, so. Okay, Natasha has to go. Natasha, uh -huh. okay. Thank you, thank you for coming. All right, so, in, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, EVO PD. Uh, oh, I'm glad to have a nice screenshot here. And um, uh, EVO, Electronic Village Online uh, professional development session for uh, first time moderators, uh, experienced moderators, helping first time moderators. And this is what we're, we're about here in these sessions. There's one more, uh, one more live. So well, that might be two if there's an, a wrap up session, I'm not sure, but there will be one next Sunday, I suppose. And um, we have a forum, uh, we have a Canvas site. What are you can... doing? Sorry? Are we oh, talking? I'm so sorry. Can you mute? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought even... I was muted. Oh, even the dog. <laughs> Okay, no, no problem. That happens. It's easy, easy for us to do. So uh, anyhow, yeah, so uh, you can keep in touch with us through the Canvas forums. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing more from you. Christine has something to say there. Uh, okay, yeah, oh, of course, the one hour time change. It's worse if you have to catch a flight. But anyway, if you just miss a meeting, well, it's not so bad. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, anyway, no further comments. I guess we'll probably wrap it up. Thank you very much, everybody. Nice to see you all here. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I just have to end the recording. Okay. More. Stop recording. All right. It's, it's gone. Bye, everybody. <laughs>